Welcome to video two. My name's Diane Michaels. And I'm here under the auspices of Music for All Seasons. We talked about how a composer, Johann Strauss Jr., in the last video, had been on a boat on the Danube River, which inspired him to write some beautiful waltzes. Now we're just gonna look at water as a source of inspiration. Water moves at different speeds, depending on whether you're talking about the ocean after a storm, or perhaps a pond out in the back of a castle. And this is more like that kind of body of water, very gentle. We're gonna listen for waves that go back and forth and back and forth. This barcarolle comes from an opera called The Tales of Hoffman by a French composer named Jacques Offenbach. happens if a composer uses a piece of art as inspiration. In other words, somebody had to be inspired first to create a piece of art, and then somebody else had to be so inspired looking at that art based on inspiration that they too felt the inspiration to create something new. That's the case with our next piece. You just saw a very fanciful picture of a gate into the city of Kiev that an artist painted. That gate doesn't exist, but that's how the artist felt a visitor to his beautiful city of Kiev should be greeted. And it's grand and built of stone and built to last. And as it happened, this artist had a best friend, Modest Mussorgsky, a Russian composer, who decided that his friend's art was so inspiring, he wrote an entire collection of pieces based on all of these paintings. I'm gonna play one for you. 
based on that great gate of the Kiev. So this is from a work called The Pictures at an Exhibition. <laughs> Did you hear how the music was big and grand, just like those towers and those soaring arches of the gate? That's what music can do. Even though we don't see what we hear, we can still feel the same thing that what we see can inspire in us. So you've gotten to listen to me play and you've seen a part of the heart, but I haven't been able to show you all of it because it's so big that we'd have to go far away and then I'd be really small. And so I thought I'd take a second from playing and show you my harp up close. This harp, I have to reach all the way up. It is over six feet tall. And that's the, what's called the crown. And it's the top of the column that runs all the way down. You'll see it's very angular. I don't have a curved column, but there are all these little ridges. And we'll see on the soundboard even that it comes to a point rather than a curve. And this is an Art Deco style harp. Instead of having flowers on my soundboard, I have beautiful angular design. The soundboard comes all the way up until we get to the neck. And then that brings us through the curve and back to the crown. Now, harp has, you've seen, that's a lot of strings. That's 47 strings. And you'll see that some are red, some are white, and some are black. That helps me figure out which one's which. So if I play from a C, D, E, F, G, A, B, back to another red C, I played a major scale. Now the harp can play many different scales, and the way we can change what our scales is, is the really cool part. We have pedals at the bottom of the harp. Ultimately, there are seven three on the left side and four on the right, and they allow us to do something really interesting. If we watch this red string, you'll see something moved. Now my pitch changed. We'll see it moved again. I'm playing one string, but it can sound like three different notes. And when we do that, we can change to different scales, but we can do really fancy scales that allow us to play glissando, which is a signature sound that only the harp can play. So it's been fun showing you what my harp looks like, and I hope you enjoyed this up-close look at the harp. Now we're going to use stories as a source of inspiration. And when you think of a story, a story tells us a lot of things. It tells us the plot, what the action is in the story. It tells us who this story is happening to. It also tells us where it took place. Now, if you're watching a movie, 
all of that's just done for you. You see it, you hear it, you really get taken into the story. But when we read a book or when we, lead, when we listen to a piece of music, we have to do a little bit of work making those words create pictures or those sounds create images. And that's what we're going to do with our next two songs and pieces. We're going to listen to how a story can be told, what it's about, where it's taking place, and see how the music can really bring us into the story. I just showed you a picture of a very famous landmark in Texas. It's called the Alamo. And in the 19th century, Texas had belonged to Mexico and it eventually became part of the United States. And a lot of the story behind that episode took place at this fort, the Alamo. So we're gonna listen, we're gonna hear a setting. We're going to first feel how we're in Southern Texas. We're gonna feel the heat. We're going to hear the Spanish influence on that region. And as the story commences and progresses, we're going to hear some of that plot, how there was a battle. And in the end, we process what we heard, we hear the music quiet down, and it brings us back to our setting again. This piece is called Echoes of the Alamo, and it's by a wonderful harpist named Louise Trotter.
Our next story is one I bet you're very familiar with. And so it's going to be a different experience listening to music that is familiar to you, that is also from a familiar story. So just as we had a chance to dance while we listened to the Strauss waltzes before, this might be a moment where you want to tell the story using dance moves to show the story of Beauty and the Beast. Thank you. 